Hi, I'm John, and this is Linda. Linda, my wife of uh, 51 years now. 1973, we started building this house. And we think it's the best place on the planet. This video is sponsored by Element. They are offering all of you a free sample pack. Just pay for shipping. Stick around to the end of the video to hear about this great offer. I was a banker in London. I was training at a Far Eastern merchant bank to be sent to Singapore or Hong Kong or somewhere. I had zero interest. I was going to go to art school. I was hoping to become a film cameraman. And then I got a job at the BBC and Linda was my temporary secretary. But after you know, working for a while in the city of London and commuting every day on the train and the rain and everything, so we decided we'd had enough and we said, let's go to Canada because one of my friends had an uncle in Vancouver. So we got into the uh, pulp and paper business, <laughs> from being merchant bankers to really rough work in the, in the pulp mill. Yeah, I was 19 when I made that decision. You'd been to Expo 67? Expo 67 in Montreal. They had a big dome there, which was one of the first. In the early 70s, sort of the, the idea of domes was you know, kind of exciting. and So we just drove down here on spec <laughs> in an old truck. It was the last piece of property for sale on this side of the road. Just, yeah, virgin land, rocks, trees. I cut the trees down myself. We took the trees to a local sawmill, had them cut into lumber, and we brought it back, scrabbled on the ground and made the foundations ourselves. Just made it up as we went along. Bought some two by fours here and there and some plywood, and, but mostly it's from my own trees. We I, actually camped on a, a rock just across the driveway. We camped in the house for a while. One plug-in and one light bulb. And we moved in and... Uh, After six months. It was really uh, Canadian homesteading. I kept detailed notes of every piece of wood, every piece of wire I bought, what was built on what day and what date. And uh, I think we reckoned $18,000 or something to build the whole house. Of course, that's 70s, 80s dollars. But uh, it doesn't cost much to do it yourself. The house itself is a 32-foot diameter dome and it's sitting on a post and beam platform. The 10 sides was to make it as round as possible so the dome would fit on top. Made it up really as we went along, decided that we need eight foot in the basement and then we put a deck around it eventually after a few years. The dome is made up of interlocking triangles, so that's what gives it its strength. The actual struts had to be bought from a very small company, like a couple of hippies in Vancouver. They had an engineer's stamp on the drawing, so we had to have that. That part of it went up in two days, and then the places where we decided we wanted windows, uh, we left open, and the rest we just uh, filled in. There's an arc of the winter sun, so when we were building, we watched where the sun went, and we put check marks on the struts to say, okay, this is where we're going to have a window. We had no plans earlier on. So we marked which ones were going to be glass, and then we boarded in all the other ones. Went over in our old truck to Vancouver, and we bought a, a great big crate of sheet glass, I think they were. Four foot six by eight foot sheets. And when you're making the first cut for the first triangle, You've got a great big piece of glass in your hand when you snap it off. Cutting those great big pieces of glass and then <laughs> getting them up there and sealing them was maybe one of the hardest things. They're shakes all the way down to the ground. They're so small you can, you can go around a spherical surface, particularly as you get to the top. You actually have to cut them into a, more of a taper. And we had scaffolding in there to do all this. And it took a long process, but we never could find anything else that would do the job of the shakes do. Shakes are good. So we put this pool in about 1982. I was a driller's assistant for a couple of days. I drilled the holes over there <laughs> and a few shots of dynamite or whatever they use. And we had a great big hole in the ground. They would dug it out and put it up there. And then eventually we built the greenhouse on top of all the rock that came out of the pool. I'm, I'm not much of a vegetable gardener. I'm not much of a gardener at all, really. But I uh, have a little bit going here. A few lettuces, a few tomatoes. The greenhouse was built out of the glass I had left over from building the house. I kept it for 30 or 40 years before, <laughs> before building the greenhouse. It's, ah, oh, I've got glass for that. So I had to make the windows a certain size to accept the glass that I'd kept. This is 
is our front door. It was a bit too public at one time, so I learned how to do some stained glass. The only thing I didn't build pretty well were these kitchen cabinets. And we eventually broke down and got someone to build these. And they've been here for 40 years. See? Very good, they were. Everything in Britain is wallpapered. When we first came here, we wallpapered everything in sight. There was wallpaper everywhere. The construction is mainly center posts holding beams up. Beams are bolted to the struts. And the inside sits on the center post. And that's, that's the construction. So before we built the upstairs, this was just one big platform. Plywood platform, we put the dome up on it. Covered everything in cedar shiplap. In the insulation behind that cedar is some styrofoam, which was more common back in the 70s, and some fiberglass insulation. There are only two by four struts, so the insulation behind that cedar is only three and a half inches. If I had to do it again, I would make everything out of two by sixes rather than two by fours. But uh, it's been okay. We just pay a slightly higher heating bill and we have a good fireplace that heats us. The rest of it is uh, baseboard heaters. We knew we were going to have a mezzanine of some kind. But we didn't know how big it was going to be. We, I think we actually had it bigger than that to start with. And then we took one of the beams away and reduced it. But when we first moved in with the two babies, they had bunk beds up in there. That was the kids' bedroom. And we slept on a mattress on the floor up here. It was pretty rough. So we lived in this park for a long time before deciding we needed more space for the kids, so this came later. That created the deck between, and this is a nice place for coffee and give our guests breakfast here. So we let them have their privacy if they wanted, or we chat if they want to chat. And uh, so this is the addition we built when the kids became teenagers to get a bit more room. In the early days we didn't have the light because, because we wanted to play ping pong in here. And we put the skylights in. And we, uh, the floor is rescued from the Mount Sicker copper mine, which was demolished uh, many, many years ago and sat there rotting till a friend of mine salvaged the wood and he didn't use it in the end. So I bought the flooring here for a hundred dollars from him. And it's all edge grain fur, not a knot in it, the best wood you can get. These are Linda's paintings, memoirs of our tango life. And this, that picture there is in Argentina. A typical orchestra that played tango back in the thirties. Pacific Energy Stove. I recently cleaned that chimney. It was not a nothing in it after a year. And it's been used a lot. So it's so efficient and so clean. It heats this whole building easily with a couple of sticks. So, and then there's a, the big downstairs. The guest bedroom. Because of the strange shape again of this building, this hexagonal building, and we've got some weird corners and we had to fudge it a little bit. Bathroom in here, bathroom and shower. And then we, we created a bridge underneath that deck to connect the houses at this level. So now we're back in the dome. This is the big post that holds the whole house up. One of the trees I cut down. <laughs> And this was, used to be our son's bedroom, just a little spare bedroom. And then it was, became our granddaughter's bedroom. This is our bedroom. And we get, we get the morning sun waking us up and the, the, the seaplanes taking off. I a kind of an alarm clock every day at half past seven. Yeah. This was my dark room at one time. And then it was our dog's bedroom. It's been all sorts of things. There was a laundry room in here for a while. It's all changed over the years. Every room has weird angles. Every room is decorated differently. Different heights, there's quite a low ceiling here. Um, and a little fireplace down here as well. Kind of nice. It triggered something in my brain um, like uh, that I can fix anything. So I'm constantly fixing things and building things and designing things. And you know, without that experience, I don't know. I was working 12-hour uh, shifts during most of those years. I'd come home and put up another sheet of drip rock. It's all been hard work, but it's good. Yes. No, it keeps you young, I think. I suppose the major lesson is... Don't put things yeah, off. Yeah, don't put things, just do it. I mean, mm. uh, if I'd never built uh, anything more than a rabbit hutch, and I can, I can build a house and anybody can do it. Don't put things off in life. Yeah, time really goes You've by so fast. Go ahead, do you it. Know, the last yeah. 50 years here. <laughs>
Well, 48 years here has really flown by when sometimes when you think about it. Electrolytes probably play a more critical role than you may think. Having or not having enough electrolytes in your body affects everything from how your brain works and mental health to your appetite and curbing cravings. Everybody needs electrolyte, but especially those that are on a low carb diet, they're doing intermittent or extended fasting, or you are very active, exercise a lot, and you sweat a lot, it's very important that you get enough electrolytes. Electrolytes can really make the difference between feeling great and feeling like garbage. Electrolyte deficiency symptoms can be headaches, fatigue, cramps, weakness, and hunger. So I've been drinking Element now for a few months and I can really tell the difference between when I'm properly hydrated with electrolytes versus when I'm not. So I highly recommend it. Uh, my favorite flavors are the citrus salt and the chocolate salt, but it's totally risk-free. You can get a free sample pack, just pay for shipping. And if you don't like it, you can give it away to your friends and Element will send you your money back, no questions asked. So check it out. Uh, go to drinkelement.com forward slash Florb and get your free sample pack today. Thank you for watching and have a great week.